All right, welcome back to the Thermo Diet Podcast, everyone. If you're watching this on video or we're live casting it here in the Thermo Diet Facebook group, uh, you can see our new setup. It looks pretty sweet. So if you're not in the Facebook group, though, you can't see it. So you got to get in the Facebook group so you can actually see something. Yeah. You want to tell them about that testimony that we had in there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm here today with Jeff Miller and... And we're, I'm not going to tap anymore. Um, and we're going to talk to you today about our favorite supplement routine. Because I yeah. think that was the main big question people are asking of like, what supplements do we take? Uh, so we're going to be discussing that today. Mm. We also uh, have a cool update from the Thermo Group about a uh, kind of a success story, like an incredible success story. Really great one. Uh, Amy essentially had been diagnosed with a brain tumor, a pituitary tumor back in 2008. Mm -hmm. And, um, pituitary tumors can cause a lot of issues. So I, I would know <laughs> I have one. <laughs> um, and they, so they can cause especially hormone issues. And then the, the medications that they will give you tend to have a lot of bad side effects because you're, you know, essentially just using drugs to operate like one of the master glands in your body, your master hormone gland. Um, and so she wanted to avoid the medications, but she'd been on it for probably, it sounds like about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she did thermo, she's been doing thermo and it essentially has healed all of her, her tumor symptoms. And more than that, she just got word on the, from the doctor on the MRI that the tumor is gone, mm -hmm. which is pretty amazing. And she's off of her medication too. and off medications, feeling good. So good job, Amy. Yeah. Shout out. Heck yeah. That's really cool. Um, also, so, the topic today was inspired by Mr. Jake Miner from the Thermo Group. So, so thanks, Jake. Heck yeah. Anyone else have any ideas for uh, content that you want us to talk about? Just let us know here. Leave a comment in the group and uh, we'll read the good ones and pick the good ones. Heck yeah. So, what's your daily supplement routine look like? Mm. All right. So, when I'm, I can tell you if like, it's almost, it's, it's pretty nice to, you know, be here because we have access to massive amounts of supplements. Yeah. And, uh, so the ideal routine that, that I've had when I've, I'm feeling the best, I, I think I'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, typically it involves a floor sill in the morning or with the first meal, which could be somewhere around, like mid morning or noon. Uh, depending on fasting, which we're also going to talk about fasting mm -hmm. in another episode. Um, floor sill, uh, a couple cortigons in the morning are really good with coffee. And I'm really looking forward to um, our new supplement that's coming out in January 2020 called Miracle Morning. Oh, yeah. And Miracle Morning, I think y'all are going to love that because it's, it's uh, designed literally to be taken while you're drinking coffee mm -hmm. in the morning. Take one or two of them. I'll probably take three um, it, where it's going to just give you that, that awesome, clear energy boost throughout the day. Um, right. First thing in the morning. So that that's essentially, I would say that's kind of my morning stack. If I really got to focus hard, uh, throw some choline in there, some dopamucuna, or now we, we had to change the name. It's called, it's called mucuna purians, uh, mm -hmm. the actual name of the herb or the extract. Um, because, and that, just an update on that, we had to change the name from Dopamucuna because Amazon banned it. Um, so really? They just had to change it? Yeah. Okay. They, they said it was a pharmaceutical right, because it has doing, dopamine in it. Yeah, because yeah. they're doing uh, all those studies on levodopa right now for Parkinson's. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it contains 15% um, L-dopa. Mm -hmm. Mucuna extract does, so or at least ours does. Um, so... Amazon banned it, so we're just renaming it so it doesn't say DOPA. Yeah. <laughs> El DOPA. Okay. So you'll be able to get it on Amazon again once we get it back up there. It should be up there soon. I think we got all the new stuff in stock now. Um, and we can get some of that over here at the office and talk about it. Some of the new the new label. We got, we're got we doing a facelift on all the Umzu stuff right now. Heck yeah. Um, but Mikuna is pretty damn cool. And you were talking mm -hmm. earlier today about Mikuna, about something cool you learned. Yeah, so um, in Ayurvedic medicine, They've actually shown that, uh, one, so they'll give you like one bean and you'll swallow it and they'll say for the entire year you're covered, um, and protected for 
snake bites. So it has protection mechanisms towards snake venom, which is really interesting. Hmm. So over in India, they'll actually use that to protect themselves from snake bites. You know, another way to protect yourself from snake bites in India is to not charm the snakes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You always see those videos of those guys like playing a flute or something and like this big cobra is like right in front of him looking straight at him and it's like, damn dude. Yeah. You know, or you can take Mikuna and charm all the snakes you want, you know, mm -hmm. get bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will not be doing that. I don't think so. Nah, no, no thanks. But so dopamine Makuna, if you got to focus hard, what's next? Um, okay, so that, that's a morning stack, and that's a pretty hearty morning stack, especially on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, I found that like I can only take so much on an empty stomach. Um, also, one good thing to wash all that down with is the Kino Octane, um, especially like right in the morning because it's got a, you know a normal amount of caffeine. It's not a lot of caffeine, but it's about the same as like a cup of coffee. Uh, it also ha contains a huge dose of B1. Mm -hmm. um, so especially if you're not using a lot of cortigon, which also has a lot of B1 in it, um, the, I found that you know having that that B1 in the morning makes me feel really good. Mm -hmm. uh, gets a good sense of well-being, a lot of energy throughout the day. Uh, so washing it all down with some Kino Octane is really good. Uh, and we have a, a new flavor coming out right now because we're recording this at the time of Black Friday. So it's Kino Friday today, actually. Yeah. We've got a blue raspberry flavor. Um, it's only available on subscription, but you can check it out at kinobody.com. Um, so that's pretty much morning. Uh, for for first meal, Sensalin with the first meal. Mm -hmm. uh, it tends to it keeps your appetite low. You get full easily. Now, are you just taking um, one capsule or all three capsules? Uh, it d depends on the size of the meal mm -hmm. and like what I'm going to do. Also, if I don't want to deal with it later in the day, mm -hmm. you, like probably the easiest thing if people really want to build a habit is, especially if you eat three meals, you would take one with each meal. And that's just an easy way to explain it to people. But it really, I, I think it's as long as it's building up and it's a, there's actually like a good amount of berberine in your system and uh, you, you could take it three at a time as well. Uh, so especially if, if I'm doing like a thermo bowl, I found that if I take three and that right, like 20 minutes before a thermo bowl and I eat one of those things, it's hard to even finish a thermo bowl Yeah, because the sensilin really does squash your appetite. Mm. Uh, so if you're trying to lose weight, that might be a really good uh, tactic, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then um, what else? Midday. Oh, just some bone broth, a cup of bone broth, mm -hmm. uh, the Umzu total bone broth, which we're renaming to Zoo Broth. Now. Yeah. Now, do you count that in collagen as a supplement? Because I really just count that as a food. It is a food, yeah. It's a supplemental food, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's technically a food, but it's also a supplement. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, then collagen, like if I have a smoothie, I'll throw a scoop of collagen there, absolutely. Um, that's probably good for midday. And then um, the after dinner typically having my Testro X. Also, if I'm gonna hit a good workout, um, then Redwood and Octane, mm. or, a, or a date. Okay. Redwood and Octane. <laughs> <laughs> that combo cannot be beat yeah. for both reasons. <laughs> um, that And that'll be typically like mid-afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and then, yeah, Testro X after dinner. Um, let me think if I'm missing anything. That's about it. I mean, that's a lot, mm -hmm. but I also like to kind of switch things up just based on like what I'm feeling. Um, doing, you know, using thyroid also is really good. Uh, I, I've been using thyroid in the morning, so mm -hmm. when I when I'll take it. Okay. Know, so, do you take any like non umzu supplements? Uh, I've used uh, non umzu butea superba in the past. And I'll just only do, I, I usually just do that for like a period. Okay. Um, mostly I've, I've used it when I was lift like this time last year, I was like really going hard in the gym, mm -hmm. get, get my strength up. Um, that was like huge focus. So I was using Butea and Kino Gains daily as well. Okay. Um, I found that with like Kino Gains is amazing if you're trying to get stronger and like dedicated to that, like a good regimen in the gym. Um, using Thor program or a Kino body program. Um, but I found that with the creatine, it does like, 
it, for me at least personally, like I, I have to be uh, in a phase where I'm like ready to drink that every day mm -hmm. uh, because it does it, it does take a little minute uh, like a minute to get your gut used to the creatine increase. Mm. Um, at least for me, and I've yeah. heard that with other people too. But um, yeah, I'll use those. That's that's probably it. Um, I've, I've got a I'm trying out a couple different like I've got a raw thyroid gland supplement right now. Okay. That's I can't remember the name of the company, for, but I've been using that. That's not an Umzu supplement. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably about it. Oh, and the liver liver uh, or the organ meat tablets. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Heck yeah. So. It sounds like a lot of supplements because it is, mm -hmm. but it you feel great when you use all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you get you're giving your body really everything it needs and wants. So heck yeah, yeah. All right, well that's me. What about you? Oh man, let's see. Um, so obviously it depends on the goal that I'm trying to accomplish. Um, let's see. Right now, what it looks like in the mornings is, I mean. I like to take Tesserax in the morning just because I feel like he gives me a good, like clean focus, especially I feel like the ashwagandha and the phosphatidylserine with cortigon work mm -hmm. synergistically with each other. So I like to stack those in the morning. Um, and then I'll also take a little bit of extra magnesium. So I'll take anywhere from an extra, you know, 200 to 400 milligrams of magnesium, just cause I've noticed that the higher ma my magnesium intake gets throughout the day, like the more my cognition and just like, my like anxiety kind of relaxes a little bit too. Yeah. So do you ever find that you take too much magnesium? If you know um, what I mean? <laughs> I, it's really interesting that you say that because I have noticed in powder form, if I take the yeah. capsules and it's time released, mm -hmm. then it doesn't. But if I take the powder, then I'm going to be running. Yeah. Later. Yeah. The, uh, that's one word of warning. If you, uh, if you are using uh, like Umzu Sleep, the sleep supplement, mm -hmm. um, don't overdo it. Yeah, <laughs> just and take the one dose. You know, like a normal person, <laughs> which I'm I'm lecturing myself here because because <laughs> sometimes I get lazy with that and I'll just dump it in. And yeah, that was you, oh man, it'll like, it'll do yeah. do you dirty. Kind of <laughs> like the uh, orange juice and baking soda yeah. incident that yeah, we yeah. had. <laughs> exactly. Um, you got to push your limits, you know, yeah. find, find your, but your edge. I noticed the more, whenever you do take magnesium, the longer that you take it and the more used to it that you get, the more that you can take over time. Um, it's like creatine. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, so I'll take some magnesium and then I've been taking uh, pregnenolone recently mm -hmm. and I really like pregnenolone. It's, uh, I don't know. It's really interesting because, like, I find that my cognition is enhanced a little bit better. Like, it's easier to focus. Um, and then I noticed that my strength has actually gone up a little bit easier mm. um, and a little bit quicker with the pregnant alone. So I've been supplementing with around, you know, 200 milligrams of that. Okay. And so I'll supplement with that. And then I've been taking... Um, some horse chestnut extract, the liquid extract with rutin. Um, and I find that really helps with vascularity. Yeah. Um, it's like redwood. Yeah. Redwood yeah. has the horse chestnut extract in it. Yep. Um, yeah. The rutin and the horse chestnut extract combo, because it's the S S N, I think is how you pronounce it, ASIN. Yeah. Um, that, that compound in horse chestnut extract especially that combo is good for varicose veins mm -hmm. and varicoceles. Um, very, very effective for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really good for endothelial cell health too. Nice. Yeah. So I'll supplement with that in the mornings and then, so I'll also supplement with a little bit of, um, pine extract. So, um, every once in a while, I'll just dose that to see, how I feel, mm -hmm. probably go through like a tincture of it. Um, and then that's usually my morning stack. And then you ever use pine pollen tincture? That's, that's what it was. Pine, pine pollen. pollen. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Cause it's bark and pollen. Extra. Yeah, yeah. It's not the bark. It's the yeah. pollen. Yeah. And so I like it, but I don't really know if I can tell a difference with it. So, I mean, I kind of feel like I wasted my money on it, but I don't know. 
yeah. it's hit or miss. So, um, let's see. And then I usually don't take any supplements like throughout the day. I like to get them over in the morning and then in the evening. And so in the evening, uh, usually after dinner, I'll have, I'll take a little bit more magnesium. Um, if I don't take sleep, if I take sleep, I won't take the extra magnesium. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will do, let's see. A little bit of baking soda. So I'll actually put a little bit of baking soda on my food because you can't really taste it. And then I'll put a little bit. It tastes kind of like salt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll put salt on there and then I'll just sprinkle a little bit of baking soda on top and then like mix it in. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put a little bit of that in my uh, nightcap drink too. And uh, I noticed that it helps, kind of helps relax a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you do for your nightcap drink? So I'll do milk with like if we get granular with it i do like 16 to 20 ounces of milk with like 60 milliliters of sugar pure cane sugar um and usually i can knock out pretty quick these past few nights i haven't been able to sleep but uh usually it's just like right out yeah i've been drinking a lot of organic orange juice recently again like in the evening Mm -hmm. just with dinner like have a few glasses of it and it, I've found that it's like I've definitely kind of calmed down, relax, like watch The Office and go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. What's, um, who's your favorite character in The Office? Creed. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I forgot another another thing that I do every day is uh, bone broth on the on the white rice or whatever. I'm If I'm cooking white rice. Okay. Um, so do some organic jasmine or basmati and mm-hmm. then. I, I've tried it a couple different ways, but like one is, is, uh, you know, actually like mixing the broth while it's boiling water and everything. Ooh, in the rice? Yeah. Okay. So that's one way, but I've found that the more delicious way is actually if you cook the rice first, take it out, like put it in the bowl and then dump the powder on top of it mm-hmm. and then mix it in like that. Yeah. It tastes better in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I I actually do bone broth daily too. I'll do a scoop. Um, And I use the pressure cooker for my rice. So I'll just dump it in a bowl and then I'll put the bone broth on there. And then I'll put like a little bit of beef tallow or butter on there. Ooh, that'd be delicious. Yeah. And it kind of like, it gives it just enough like liquid to mess with to kind of stir it in really nice. And it doesn't clump up. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Because sometimes it can can clump Mm -hmm. because of the gelatin in there. Yeah. So... Mm-hmm. So it's pretty good, but yeah. Are there, so I got a good question. If you could only take five supplements, single ingredient. It's a good question. What would they be? Single ingredient. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just like. Um, I think the approach to that is completely measuring your micronutrient deficiencies mm-hmm. and then taking the five ones that you're definitely deficient in. Cause mm-hmm. I think at any moment, any of us are deficient in certain things. Yeah. That would be what I would do. Yeah. Um, but if I didn't know, then I would go for statistical stuff. Mm-hmm. So cause not everyone measures everything and you know, even frequently right. cause it can change so often. Yeah. I take vitamin D and vitamin K as well. I forgot to say that. I take that in the morning. K2, D3. Mm-hmm. K2, yeah. So yeah, those are good. K2 is hard to get. For, in the diet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd probably take, if I did, if I wasn't measuring, I didn't know my deficiencies, but I want to go with statistics. Mm-hmm. I would take choline, uh, at least a gram a day. Mm-hmm. I would take iodine, um, selenium, potentially copper or magnesium. Yeah. Magnesium for sure. It'd be like, I'd, I'd go with magnesium, zinc, choline, iodine, and selenium. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That will handle most of the issues. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I think my top ones would be magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin K, pregnenolone, and probably something for cognition, like mm, maybe phosphatidylserine. Mm-hmm. Just like a really high potency phosphatidylserine. Yeah. It's hard to pick because the, um, 
like the the minerals and trace minerals are really important mm-hmm. because they're hard to get in your diet. But yeah. then there's this other stuff like phosphoserine, mm-hmm. uh, ashwagandha mm-hmm. that also like have a big effect on a wide thing, like yeah. a wide range of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, um, whenever I look at the minerals like, you know, copper, zinc, selenium, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to pound in the oysters. And then whenever it comes to choline, what I like to do is I'll separate the egg yolks from the egg whites and I'll cook up the egg whites and toss the egg yolks in my rice every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. No, what I've um, been doing recently is cooking the eggs, stick them on the bottom of the thermal bowl. Okay. With like barely, don't break the yolks or like barely break them mm-hmm. and then take them out of the pan. And then I'll like, I'll eat a bit of it while the rice is finishing, but I'll leave a lot of the yolk in there mm-hmm. and I do the same thing and I'll just dump the rice on top. Yeah. Stir it in with the bone broth. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the main reason that I've been doing that is cause there's, um, pregnenolone in the egg yolk, but then there's also choline and I don't want to denature it by heating it too mm-hmm. much. Um, it's just kind of like, I don't know, I get a little paranoid about it. So I'll just separate the egg yolk from the egg white and toss it in my rice and mix it in yeah. and then I'll cook up the egg whites. And so I can see that. And then, you know, I'd probably eat liver one to two times a week. And yeah. So if you, if you had a good diet strategy, you could get those minerals. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a good point. And then, uh, then you wouldn't have to supplement with them and then you could supplement with the fun stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Heck yeah. So that'd be the other tactic. That's yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. But now what's interesting about pregnenolone too, is that there's some, studies that show it actually lowers cholesterol because what it does is it promotes the synthesis of itself and of progesterone. Um, and so, uh, pregnenolone is the step after cholesterol. So cholesterol gets converted into pregnenolone and then it, from there it goes into all the other steroid hormones. Um, and it's really interesting because it doesn't have that negative feedback loop. It's kind of like a positive feedback loop. Um, so it promotes the synthesis of itself and of progesterone. So there's no feedback to stop producing your own? Right, pregnenolone. Just because it's so used mm-hmm. widely? Because it's it's the first step in all of the androgenic yeah. hormones. And so it's being used to for all of them. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. So, and I think... I was listening to a podcast by Ray Pete. He took up to like three to four grams a day for an entire year. Wow. Um, and he said he only saw positive benefits. He said he, his skin actually became tighter. Um, he actually reduced some of the wrinkles like around his eyes and stuff, which was kind of interesting. I was just picturing like a bodybuilder Ray Pete, right? Yeah. <laughs> like um, an 80-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> Get lean. <laughs> he also said that um, pregnenolone can shut down some of the stress hormones like cortisol, mm-hmm. which was kind of interesting in adrenaline. So I was like, shoot, I'll shoot. buy me some pregnant <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Cool. But okay. All right. So if you only, so let's, let's talk about like, yeah. What, what would be like the most, if you were using, we could talk about maybe a couple different categories, right? Mm-hmm. So people that want to focus, you want to focus, you want a better memory, better learning, faster cognition in general. Mm-hmm. What would be the top three supplements? Okay. I guess it depends like how crazy you want to go with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause you know, you have things like the racetams, like the hardcore nootropics. Yeah. Um, so but there's like natural ones and then not, there's yeah. like all the racetams aren't natural, they're synthetic, mm-hmm. but they're some, variation I, I i'm pretty sure they're all like uh, so, somewhat modeled off b vitamins i think so yeah yeah so paracetam was the first one mm-hmm. and then there's just derivatives the of all the other ones and then i think anaracetam is the one that has the least amount of side effects long term yeah i've I, i've used anaracetam in the distant past i was experimenting with all those things um it's pretty good Mm -hmm. it's not very long lasting yeah it only lasts for like an hour and a half so yeah but it um it's 10 or 11 times more powerful than parastam is Mm -hmm. uh parastam i i didn't really feel much like you have to take a kind of a big dose to to use it yeah it's real subtle yeah and um but also one thing to note if someone is using nootropics to you you have to supplement with choline yes 
with it. Because you'll quickly deplete your choline, which you're already deficient mm -hmm. in anyway. So. And that's why a lot of people get migraines whenever they supplement mm -hmm. with them is because they're burning out of all of their choline stores. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So if you want to get like really hardcore, that would be probably something that I would do. But if I want to do something that's sustainable long term, um, cortigon obviously would be the one. So phosphatidylserine and ginkgo biloba would be the two biggest ones. Um, along with a little bit of B6, mm -hmm. um, just because like, especially after reading Nutrient Power, the amount of respect that I have. The for, B vitamin, mm -hmm. especially B6. Yeah. yeah. B12. Um, so B6 would be one. And then I think, I don't, I really like pregnenolone. I really like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're I mean, a pregnenolone kid. Yes. <laughs> like I really like it. So, um, yeah, those would probably be mine. What about yours? Uh, I would do, yeah, Cortigon, um, Mucuna. Uh, what else? If it was natural, like all natural. Mm -hmm. um, that's another really strong one. Probably just still choline. Like, yeah. for real, choline is freaking great. Yeah. So simple. I would definitely supplement with choline on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. What's interesting is that choline can actually, um, especially whenever you take the powder, it acts like a bitter. Um, and then what that does, so like the estrogen can be excreted through the bile and then it's excreted in the feces. And so if you can use choline as a bitter to excrete the estrogen into the system and then methylate it and then pass it out, mm -hmm. that's one of the strategies that I like to use to yep. help. Get rid of that estrogen. Yeah, choline's pretty damn useful mm -hmm. for a lot of things. Yeah, the liver, the brain. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's interesting. And it was actually, wasn't it originally grouped with the B vitamins? It was like called vitamin J or something like that. Yeah, vitamin J. I think it was. I think it's closest to. I forgot what they called it. Uh, it was. It's like really similar to one of them. Okay. So that's why they were. It's. It's some some places you'll see it grouped with one mm -hmm. or with the B vitamins, but other places people are like, no, it's a separate, you know, but it's very similar to them. Yeah. And 90 plus percent of people are deficient in choline too. So it's like, yeah. um, it's a necessary nutrient to get in. Yeah. It's almost like if you're on an average diet, that's probably the number one thing that you should supplement with right off the bat because mm -hmm. it's the cheapest. You can get a lot of it really quick. Um, and it's, really safe yeah you can take high doses of it um people like there's different forms of it also mm -hmm. that so i typically just use bitartrate uh it's it's less bioavailable than uh like city choline mm -hmm. but it's or alpha gpc or, or alpha gpc which is like a more potent pot that's more of like the nootropic one yeah mm -hmm. just because you can take a smaller dose to get a bigger effect mm -hmm. um However, I like the I like just like kind of the raw material aspect of bitartrate. Yeah, where you can still control uh, like a larger dose. You could take it as a powder. Uh, you don't have to mess around with it. It's like very affordable, very cheap. Um, so that's why I think it's generally like a good option for people to use as like a base level of choline mm -hmm. for a supplement. Um, because a lot of a lot of people like alpha GPC is, is really expensive to get yeah. in the right dose. Um, it's just not, especially if someone's taking like a full supplement regimen, it's not as economical mm -hmm. for them to use it. Uh, it's not saying it's bad, it's great. but mm -hmm. And like a lot of the percentages that some of these brands toss out there of Alpha GPC, it's not potent enough. No, so yeah, the ones you see in a yeah. lot of these supplements, they're not even using enough. Yeah, you know? so I don't know. I, I kind of, choline by tartrate is like the most widely you know, reliable, I mm -hmm. would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of see it like creatine monohydrate. Like it's just this raw material supplement that has a lot of research behind it. It's easy to get. It's inexpensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good foundational thing. Yeah. So whenever you take certain supplements, do you notice that any give you more vivid dreams? Cause that's one thing yeah, that a lot magnesium. of people notice with, yeah, with Testro yeah and sleep 
I think it's the combination of the ashwagandha and the magnesium. Yeah, could be. Yeah. And then I, I noticed recently I started supplementing with the dopamine at night mm -hmm. and I started getting like very lucid dreams, cool. which was, was just kind of interesting. Let's try that. Yeah. Try a dream, dream stack. Yeah. 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 We should make a dream <laughs> stack on the store. Might as well. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, take this for bed, lucid dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's pretty reliable. Like a lot of people say that, mm -hmm. that like they'll take you know Testro or Thyrite, mm -hmm. and then Zoo Sleep before bed, and they're like, "Whoa!" Yeah, kind of freaks them out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it does freak some people out. Like if, if they don't, if they're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. I tend to not really. I, I like dreams. You know, mm -hmm. I like to work during my dreams. <laughs> yeah, I, all I think I just think about work all the time. <laughs> So for somebody who has a very uh, manual labor job or struggling with arthritis or something like that, what's the biggest supplement that they could take for pain and inflammation relief? Pain and inflammation, I would go with um, like our, our Zoo Relief, Total Relief supplement has a really incredible combination of, of everything that's proven to lower inflammation uh, in the right dose as well as um, organic hemp extract, mm -hmm. either full spectrum or broad spectrum. I, I think they're, it's very potent mm -hmm. to help with pain relief, very, very much effective. Um, in terms of the zoo relief, not in terms of like non-cannabis stuff, it'd be uh, uh, bromelain. I love bromelain. Yeah. yeah. It actually eats away at a lot of the uh, scar tissue too. Yeah, I mean, it acts as an enzyme. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's good stuff mm -hmm. or just eat a bunch of pineapple. Yeah. The, the thing with pineapple though, is there's obviously a limit mm -hmm. to, to it. Like if you eat a lot of it, your taste buds start to get all fuckered, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> <they're> different <laughs> or it like kind of burns the top of your mouth or something. Hmm. Um, but I, I do love pineapple mm -hmm. and then, uh, organic turmeric. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um, now you have to take that with bioparin because the absorption of it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is uh, black pepper extract. Mm -hmm. So it's it helps make it more bioavailable. You don't have to take it with it, but it, it's a lot better if you do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What do you think about pain? Pain. Yeah. Any other one? Um, I think uh, creatine with baking soda pre-workout is a really good combination because uh, both of them are shown to buffer lactic acid. And so it's going to increase muscular endurance and allow you to go harder for longer. So that would definitely be a pre-workout snack that I would do is a good baking soda with a good creatine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing that a lot of, I've seen a lot of reviews or testimonials on uh, over the years is people that do work a manual labor job using redwood uh and it's helping them a lot just having the stamina throughout the day um keeping the blood flow in all the right spots mm -hmm. sometimes i mean if you work eight to 12 hours a day like on a construction site or whatever like you're really taxing your body or or you know uh, even delivery people people that are getting in and out of cars all day um that can take a toll so getting getting the blood flow in all the right spots is really good also keeping your immune system high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of success stories about that. Heck yeah. Hmm. And Redwood also has a lot of success stories with truck drivers. Really? Yeah, as a group. Okay. Um, which is cool because they're sitting all day. So you want to make sure that you're not like choking off um, circulation when mm -hmm. you're sitting there. Yeah. It's really interesting. I was... Uh, so I've been doing a lot of this ingredient research for the YouTube channel at Umzu Health. Um, and one of the things that I learned is like magnesium, you know, I, I don't think they included choline in this statistic, but uh, behind vitamin D deficiency, magnesium was the second most common deficiency. Mm -hmm. So I think supplementing with vitamin D, magnesium, and then a good choline supplement would be up there uh, on the list for just like the general population. I think that would be good. Mm -hmm. cover a lot of bases and vitamin D is necessary for hormonal synthesis too. Yeah. And another thing just to highlight is like the importance of gut health in general. Mm -hmm. Um, cause we haven't talked about it very much, but if you aren't 
consuming foods that have any sort of like natural probiotics in it, uh, that's a big lever to pull in terms mm. of uh, getting a good probiotic like Fluorosil and um, using that to kind of restore the balance of the gut bacteria to, mm. to tip it back. Because if people, especially people that eat like a kind of a standard diet, the their gut is usually pretty bad. Um, mm. And it impacts everything. It's kind of the first line of defense. That's where all your food goes. You have to be able to break down and absorb the food. Your your gut bacteria literally communicate with your with your brain um, via neuronal communicate, like the neuronal impact, because there are so many neurons in the gut. Mm -hmm. So the gut bacteria will like the concentration of it's just, all back to ratios again. The concentration is skewed in the wrong direction is going to have a negative impact on that communication with your brain. Therefore, your hormones get impacted because of the the HP whatever axis you know whether mm -hmm. it's a gonadal like adrenal gonadal thyroid whatever mm. gets impacted by your gut. So if you have a bad gut, you should take some time to restore it and get into like a maintenance pattern with it. Uh, Fluorosil is an incredible way to do that. It's really easy. It's formulated for that reason. Um, obviously having prebiotic fibers available to those probiotics will help them. So we also have a prebiotic supplement, ACV plus prebiotics. Uh, but you can get plenty of prebiotic fibers from, from fruits and roots. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating thermo, you're also going to have plenty of prebiotics. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting cause you know, I think we talked about this little, the L rootery strain mm -hmm. actually produces what is known as rutarin and it actually acts as a antimicrobial substance that helps get rid of a lot of the bad bacteria in the gut which is really interesting mm -hmm. i think that's really cool that it's kind of like the secret weapon it's if the you navy will. seal <laughs> strain yeah send it in there yeah take out the bad guys clear it out and yeah. like endotoxin in uh, it's really interesting because like uh, it produces lipopolysaccharide, which gets into the peripheral tissues, which increases the amount of serotonin that's in the peripheral tissues. And then this leads to inflammation. And then that inflamed state can lead to, it's been correlated to all kinds of things, obesity, diabetes, anxiety, depression, like all kinds of things. So downregulating the amount of endotoxin that you have in the gut is crucial. Mm -hmm. It's crucial. Yep. But yeah so okay well i think we covered quite a bit in mm -hmm. this episode that's pretty good uh so we're gonna do a quick little product pitch here at the end before we uh close this out and today we're going to talk about testro x yeah so testro x was actually one of the first formulas that we made here at umzu back originally truth nutra um testro x is formulated with three specific uh, kind of segments or purposes of the of the ingredients, uh, the first being overcoming micronutrient deficiencies that cause hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. And Testorex can be used by both men and women, while it clearly is mostly used by men in terms of what it's named. Uh, mm -hmm. But it can still restore a similar uh, contextual hormonal balance to women as well. So women do take it. Uh, the, those key nutrients, though, are um, magnesium and zinc, mm -hmm. which have like the widest body of research showing that and completely proving that if your testosterone is low because of these deficiencies, you can actually correct it in as little as a couple weeks if you overcome those deficiencies. Wow. So, um, and that's purely if the low T is caused by one of those deficiencies, then just correcting the deficiency will bring it back, mm -hmm. which is cool. Yeah. Um, also, we have trace mineral boron in there, which is a really cool mineral. Yeah. Um, you just wrote up some, some cool stuff about boron recently, right? Yeah, boron's really interesting. It, it's, uh, so it, it can actually free up a lot of testosterone in the system, and it uh, plays a role in how you actually use that testosterone, too. So it can help you use testosterone more effectively, but then it can also detach a lot of the testosterone from the SHBG molecule, which attaches to the testosterone molecule and renders it inactive. So it's like, get back here. Come, yeah. come here. Yeah, so it yeah. frees that it takes up. Takes it back. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, it's real. It, it's really interesting, and there's a lot of really cool research on boron that's out there. Yeah, yeah. Lowering estrogen pretty significantly, also. Yeah. Um, and then lowering inflammation biomarkers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a big one that I saw. That was really interesting. Um, 
And then bone density, it actually helps with uh, magnesium absorption mm -hmm. and it helps with bone mineral density. So. Yeah. So the combo of the boron and the magnesium are really helpful in Testro X. Mm -hmm. uh, and the cool thing with the studies done on boron for hormone reasons is the very short amount of time that it has like these massive Im effects. Yeah. And we get, we put the exact dosage of boron in Testro X that's actually in these studies, mm -hmm. which is 10 milligrams. Yep. Um, the 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 two huge studies showing like these crazy hormone improvements with boron were over one was over seven days and then one was over 28 days mm -hmm. and it seems like just over that increased period of time it has like that widening impact mm -hmm. on on your hormones and improving them yeah one to four weeks yep it's crazy pretty cool yeah um also we have a couple herbs in there extracts KSM 66 ashwagandha, which has two clinical trials on uh, testosterone specifically for different purposes. One of them is on um, like sexual health related parameters. And the other one is on uh, muscular strength and endurance, power output, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And those are really interesting because they actually talked about um, decreasing body fat by like three and a half percent. Yeah, there was, yeah, there was a big decrease in body yeah. fat percentage. And they didn't measure their caloric intake or anything either, like doing that. Yeah. Which is really interesting. And I think that's probably stress modulation, mm -hmm. the impact there, and estrogen. Um, and then the other, the sexual health parameters were also like a massive improvement, crazy. For uh, sperm count went up, I believe that was a four week study. I think. Um, sperm mm -hmm. count went up 167%. Yeah. <laughs> which is nuts. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So if your swimmers are having trouble, yeah. Then, Ashwagandha is definitely yeah, the one that you need. Trying to have a kid, that yeah, that will help. Uh, yep, that's a lot more sperm. <laughs> and then uh, we got forscolin in here, which increases cyclic AMP, mm -hmm. which increases the production of testosterone in the Leydig cells, right? Yep, yep, downstream. So actual literal like, the Leydig cells are in the testicles. Mm -hmm. So they're the the testicular driver of testosterone production. Mm -hmm. So um, the the cyclic AMP production from forskolin helps that, or for, for scoli root extract, or mm -hmm. however you pronounce it. Coleus forskoli. Coleus forskoli. There's a bunch of names of this. Yeah. Exactly. It's all the same thing. But <laughs> um, so that is in there, and then there's uh, some glycine, L-theanine, mm -hmm. and inositol, and uh, basically those were added uh, to, because of the research showing that their their positive impact on GnRH okay which is the hormone that's secreted from the hypo, hypothalamus communicates directly with the pituitary gland to produce more LH and FSH hmm. and so we're hitting it from all angles with the formula here for testro and that's why people love it so much that's why when especially when older guys um, guys that are you know middle age and, and getting into older age when they take it they see uh, profound improvements pretty quickly mm -hmm. because of, uh, in my opinion, like an increase in uh, stress load over time, chronic stress, uh, increase in estrogen load over time, and increase in deficiencies over time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just the older people get, the more deficient you get and stuff if you're not paying attention to it. So um, they'll see the most, like guys that are 40s, 50s, 60s, even 70s, see a very profound uh, improvements over the first 90 days of using test mm -hmm. which is really cool. The biggest comment that I've seen is energy. Energy. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's the number one thing that everyone, because it's mostly like the, the most tangible feeling that you get mm -hmm. when you don't have it. Yeah. It sucks. Like if you yeah. don't have energy throughout the day, you're just like, man, I'm so freaking tired. Like, yeah. What's wrong? I've actually seen some comments on there that people are pissed because whenever they stop taking it, they don't have as much energy and they're all like, yeah. I can't ever stop taking this again. <laughs> yeah. Get on a subscription. Yeah. Definitely. Save some money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's Testro X. Hopefully you guys learned a lot from our uh, conversation today on, and got some ideas for yourself in, in terms of your own supplement routine, what you want to use. Again, it, you know, you don't have to be perfect, but like Jayton mentioned, like, Crafting a supplement routine around your goals mm -hmm. is important. Definitely. Um, you can't take everything. It's, it's, uh, I'd say the, the very first thing you need to do is, is if you're really, really serious about turning your health around is like getting that micronutrient test, finding the deficiencies, mm -hmm. supplementing based on those deficiencies uh, in terms of leverage. But then there are tons of really cool 
useful, wide ranging uses of uh, other supplements like herbs yeah. that you can use. And I would say learning how to craft a nutrient rich diet mm -hmm. and then finding the supplements that support those um, is, is probably the biggest thing that you can do too. Yep. And it just so happens Thermo is very nutrient rich, and yeah. easy to digest, contains yeah. a lot of prebiotic fibers, um, tastes better than every other diet on earth. Yeah. I mean, so I'll never do anything else. Yeah. It's just the way to, the way to eat, how to eat. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be signing off. Go subscribe wherever you like to listen to this podcast. We're pretty much all over the place now. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, the feed. Yeah. Make sure to leave a review. Yep. And, uh, and get in the Facebook group. Yeah, get in the Facebook group. People are killing it in there all the yeah. time. Curing brain tumors now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right, thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next show.